A supernova was a star. Then it was transformed into something new that is capable of taking on greater responsibility within the body of the galaxy. Galaxies are very complex. They are not just a random collection of independent stars. In fact, a galaxy is just as complex as your body. In biology class, we learn that each cell in your body has very specific responsibilities. These cells are grouped together into tissues that have their own functions. The tissues are grouped together into organs that have more far-reaching responsibilities within the proper functioning of the body as a whole. The same structure or hierarchy is present in galaxies. The stars that we see in the sky are just one aspect of galactic intricacies. Stars are grouped together into larger structures that were particularly shown to us by the Planck and Herschel space telescopes. These larger structures are part of still larger functional regions within the full body of the galaxy. Each of these levels of organization is doing something. None of it is pointless or random. Where does a supernova fit into this larger perspective? For it is only with such a perspective that we can begin to understand the nature of supernova. I did not invent the perspective. I was lucky enough to inherit the ideas and I'm doing my best to apply them to astronomy. I began studying supernova in the late 1980s, collecting data about the pulsar named 1913 plus 16. We were looking at the spin down rate to compare that with the theory of general relativity. As much as we know about supernova, it will probably not come as a surprise that we also know very little about them. We are confident that they start off as stars, and somehow that star undergoes a very rapid transformation, which for an instant puts out as much energy as the entire galaxy of which it is a part. This brief, all-encompassing flash is what we call the supernova. After that flash, the star is gone, and we see in its place something very different. The very center of this new creature pulses very rapidly, hundreds, even thousands of times a second. Each supernova remnant has a unique pulse shape, unique like your fingerprint or voice. Around this compact pulsing center is a rapidly expanding, larger electric and magnetic body. Here is a little portrait gallery of such transformed stars. What strikes me first is their beauty and their individuality. There is a bit of a classification problem for people familiar with the astrophysics. For a long time, we classified the events as type one and type two, but then we found some that blended the features of the two types. Then we found ones that were neither type. Then we found more and more that were supposed to be impossible. I would like to change the terms of the discussion. Let us stop describing supernovas as dead or dying stars. Let's stop describing them as type one and two. Let's forget about the distinction with planetary nebula. Let's instead start talking about transformed stars, about stars that are reborn onto a larger playing field, about stars that found some way to be conduits for a greater amount of energy and hence are able to take on greater responsibility. Our galaxy is filled with structures like this, which became visible to us only from the Planck and Herschel telescope data. 100 light years across, composed of an enormous variety of organic molecules, connected into a coherent whole by magnetic fields, electric currents flowing through the whole thing, complex vibrations traveling up and down the whole structure. Hundreds or thousands of stars might participate in such a structure. It has very well-defined boundaries, membranes actually, that are just as well-defined as your blood vessels. These plasma membranes are also, like all the membranes of your body, semi-permeable. At one lecture, I showed this picture and a woman yelled out, 
That looks like a fallopian tube, which is certainly thinking in the right direction. We really do not know what this thing is and never will understand it without acknowledging that it has a function. It is doing something for the interstellar medium or for the galaxy. Supernova are connected with these sorts of larger structures. We do not know yet which comes first, the supernova or the larger structure, or if they arise together as part of some larger process. Now that we've spoken very briefly about these cosmological miracles, let us turn the focus to a human level. What can we learn about ourselves by studying supernova? Supernova are extraordinary stars. Perhaps they can shed light on extraordinary people. I've always been fascinated with how some people, like a Mahatma Gandhi or a St. Clair of Assisi, can affect so many people over such a large distance and for such a long time. I'm not talking about social media. I think that is a different discussion. Let us keep our focus on pre-internet circumstances. How much effect can one person have? Most of us affect only our nearest neighbors. Yet in history, we see that some people affect whole continents. Think of Gandhi in India. We see hundreds of thousands, even millions of people being moved physically, now here, now there. We know that by the thousands, they're having new thoughts about themselves and their country, new hopes and wishes and that these new thoughts and feelings will persist for decades and will be felt in the future by people who never met him. Well, I have to admit, I do not actually know what kind of energy can produce all that. I do know that it is orders of magnitude beyond what you and I are capable of in our current condition. Let us bounce back and forth between the world of supernova and the world of people in hopes of understanding both better. A supernova becomes instrumental in organizing matter over much larger distances than it did while it was a star. Our star orchestrates matter over a distance of about a hundredth of a light year. That means affecting mostly only the star's nearest neighbors. By comparison, the Crab Nebula supernova is organizing matter over at least 20 light years and is connected to structures that are hundreds, maybe thousands of light years across. That is a scale jump, comparable to how St. Clair could change the life of the religious, not only in the small town of Assisi, but in all of Italy, and then all of Europe. Clare did not yell louder to reach more people. I'm fairly certain she was soft-spoken. Some other transformation must have taken place in her that allowed her to be connected to people over vastly larger distances. Another supernova characteristic is the quantity and the quality of the new energies produced. I've already mentioned that during its initial flare, the supernova can put out a quantity of energy comparable to the entire galaxy. That would be like one of your cells putting out as much energy as your entire body. The average cell would be blown to smithereens by that much energy. The Crab Nebula continues to put out at least 100,000 times the energy of our sun. In the real world, quantity is important, but also the quality of energy is important. As a physicist, our toolbox is very limited in distinguishing describing, measuring different qualities of energy. Some physicists even believe that energy cannot have different qualities, but something can exist even if I do not have a name for it. The best we can do with current physics is to look at the frequency of the energy emitted. For example, the frequencies emitted by the Crab Nebula compared to an ordinary star. We see that for the supernova, the frequencies are shifted very much towards the higher, such as ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray. The crab pulsar, in fact, has the distinction of being the source of the highest frequency photons we have ever measured. Higher frequencies are more penetrating. Think about X-rays being able to give you a photo of the inside of the body 
as opposed to the lower frequencies of visible light that can see only the very outside of your skin. Higher frequencies can also carry more information. Bringing this over to the human realm, I'm not necessarily saying that Buddha emitted higher frequencies than you and me, though he very well might have. I am saying that the energies he worked with were much more penetrating and able to accomplish much more in a very short time. In the electric cosmology viewpoint, stars are conduits for energy. Just as everything is in the universe, you and I do not really create energy. We take in material around us and we liberate that energy. Stars transform the galactic electrical energy into the light and heat that sustain us. Stars are conduits for the liberation or the transformation of energy. When a star goes supernova, it becomes capable of conducting millions of times more energy than the star it came from. In the human world, I am proposing that something comparable is possible for you and me and was actual for the Buddha and perhaps on a smaller scale for someone like Dr. Martin Luther King. Their lives and consciousness actually are more penetrating. They are working with a different quality of energy. They found a way to conduct and transform both a larger quantity and a finer quality of energy. A third characteristic of the supernova is that of changing time. In the compact pulsar that we see in the center of the growing supernova body, the gravity is so intense that according to general relativity, time flows hundreds or even thousands of times slower than it does for you and me. But there's more to it than that. I can have two events of equal energy, but the effects of one event will dissipate and disappear very quickly, while the effects of the second event might last for years or centuries. What makes that difference? I wonder about that. I think it has something to do with working for myself versus working for others. Vainglory and self-importance generally do not lead to lasting and beneficial change. But even the worst tyrants have claimed they were working for the benefit of others, so we must be very careful when trying to answer this one. I do know that the soul of Martin Luther King Jr. really does reach across time to touch people who never knew him. I know that many physicists tell us that cause and effect only work locally, and causes cannot stretch across time. But my direct experience tells me otherwise, and I must follow what I know. That time is flexible and has other dimensions outside of a simple line is actually ancient knowledge, and I would dare say a direct experience that many of us have had. Basic principles are expressed at all levels of the universe. The potential to really change and become useful to something larger is a principle that is playing out at every level of the universe, in cells, in people, in stars, which you can begin to see if you know to look for it. We can learn about such possibilities in ourselves by studying the comparable phenomena outside ourselves. Studying this possibility in the world around me can help me work with the same in myself. If we did not see it with our own eyes, we would not believe that stars could become supernova. But they do. If we did not see it with our own eyes, we would not believe that caterpillars can turn into butterflies. But they do. And that level of transformation really is comparable to a transition latent within each of us.